This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Norman. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? You okay now, Cammy? I could hear the audio. I can't normally hear the audio. They were just... I can, uh, hear, it. I can hear it here, too. Are you sure you don't have the sound on on your laptop? No. The sound <laughs> is off on the laptop. Okay. You're probably just hearing it through the headphones. I'll turn my headphones down. That would be good. Okay. I don't want you to lose your hearing. I'm doing just fine. Do you have a shtick this week, or can we introduce our guest? Well, I'm joined by my friend... <laughs> anyway. You actually made my knee jump when you screamed like a girl. <laughs> oh, that's not you screaming. That's your friend it's one talking. Of the grays, or I think. I don't know. Is that your friend trying we'll, to communicate we'll, with we'll us? We'll get more on him later during the You know, I Halloween. saw a picture of him on Facebook. He's a lot of cleavage. <laughs> he's hot. Uh, I think I'm he's a saying. derby girl. I'm just saying. Uh, and can we introduce our guest now? Yeah, in a Do you second. You think that would be appropriate? Uh, since he's our guest on the show. Yeah, it's um, it's a weird evening. A lot of stuff going on. Yes, there is a. We'll, we'll get into that weirdness, but maybe we should introduce our guest, and then we can get into the weirdness. Maybe we should. Did we warn him that this show, this part of the show, we kind of just. Yeah, then you're forewarned. Doctor Normal just broke his headphones. This is Curtis Chen, everybody. Hello. He was with us just a few minutes ago in the Tech Edition, so I'm sure you remember him from that. <laughs> but we don't have nearly as much uh, pre-planning for the after hours, except that I asked you very specifically if you would bring something to read to me. Yes, you did. So please select something that you have the rights to. Um, yes. <laughs> very important. Um, <laughs> and I read it. Yeah. So I do. Okay. So I'm going to give you. Perhaps your, 90 seconds. 90 seconds. That's pretty and sure. no more. Well, 90 seconds minimum. <laughs> oh, okay. Like 230 maximum. Or, you know, well, if you have 30 minutes, we're good with that too. <laughs> really? You let him read to me the whole time? Because I could go for that. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> let me get a pillow. Hold on. Okay. So, Tell me uh, a scary nighttime story now. Um, I don't think I have anything scary here, but I will give you a choice of three things. Okay. Um, I have one of them. I have my 512 words, the flash fiction from a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. which you may have seen online. Um, mm. And a couple people enjoyed it. And... <laughs> Because it, I did that after I stopped the podcast. Mm -hmm. It's not available in audio, so this will be exclusive to Strange Drink some of your tea, Cammy. <laughs> um, the like second choice is something from uh, my last year's NaNoWriMo novel, oh. which um, is a puzzle hunt thriller, I guess. And it's called Endgame, Endgame, Endgame the yeah. crappy first draft. I'm yeah, guessing I that's did. just on the first draft show us? edition. Show yeah. us the camera. It, yeah, and I, I only did nope. that, so yeah. Cool. Ignore the image because it may look familiar to some people. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, how did you did, publish those? Um, I, I've been doing these on Lulu.com, Lulu? and it's really right. only because my wife doesn't like to read the manuscript format, which mm -hmm. is the typewriter Large. font with the uh, you yeah. know yeah mm -hmm. she can't stand that and so do you like Lulu? Novel. does lulu work well yeah, for you it's worked pretty well we also used it for um, one of our puzzle hunts that we ran we printed up a textbook for the teams it was a Ooh, fancy the theme was uh, hogwarts nice. from harry potter so all the teams got a textbook and we used lulu and yeah i've been pretty happy i mean it's i don't really do the whole self-publishing thing Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of, I would prefer to get a traditional publisher and yeah. you know, have them do all the hard but you stuff. you got to make the wife and, happy. Yes, exactly. So, and she did read that and liked parts of it, which is good. <laughs> so there's a bit from that. And then I also brought um, a couple things by Cory Doctorow mm -hmm. because he is very big on Creative Commons and mm -hmm. all his books he puts online. 
so you can download them in a variety of formats totally free i would Um, definitely like you to read something that you've written okay and my inclination is to have you read this because we can get the entire thing sure is that okay with you sure that's fine all right now everyone sit back and listen carefully please okay story time please Oh, I'm going to need a second because I have to do voices for this. I forgot about that part. Oh, excellent. <laughs> that, yeah, we'll talk about that I later. Picked the right, I picked the right piece of okay. those voices. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, just nice, <laughs> nice close-up. <laughs> Dr. Normal. Was, yeah, was... that'll be nice for my mom to see. <laughs> Hello, Mom. <laughs> Sorry, we made him make faces. Okay. Be, be, before you start, let me unzip this bag. Let us make all the noise we need to make. Let you whip that out. Before we make noise. (laughs) Dr. Arnold's pulling out the equipment. My my laptop just (laughs) just overheated, so I need to set it on the... uh, Cooling. Cooling pad or whatever the heck (laughs) this thing is. We have a very professional setup going on in here. (laughs) Well, you know, it's after hours. Anything goes. Okay, so he's got it on the cooling station. Just let us know when Curtis can proceed. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So let's. Meanwhile, let's, let's so. take a moment. I'm good. We're ready we now. Can. Yeah, let me sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, bless you, Doctor wow. Normal. What a great day. Uh, <laughs> it's good to have you here, Curtis. By the way, <laughs> well, thank if you, I haven't said already, we're really excited. Nice. To we're get excited to, come to have on the you. Show. Yeah, I'm glad to be yeah. here. Okay, I think I'm okay now. <laughs> Do you think you're ready? I do. Do you need to sneeze, cough, or burp? Uh, <laughs> no wind needs to be broken. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's right, roll let with me, it. Let me just cough for the sake of it. <laughs> <coughs> all right, Curtis, I think we're good. Curtis? <laughs> Any things you need to do? <laughs> no, I, I think I'm good. Oh, yeah, never going on that strange love live again. <laughs> Those guys are crazy jerks. Right, Doctor, I'll turn All right. off your microphone. All right. <laughs> okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. The wren and the hen and the men in the pen. By Curtis C. Chen. That's me. Every morning, the wren descended from the Baron's airship to visit with the hen in the barnyard. The hen neither desired nor encouraged these conversations, but, confined as she was within her coop, could do little to prevent their occurrence. On this morning, the wren shouted from far across the barnyard, They're here! Can you see them? They're almost here! Go away, said the hen, delivering her customary greeting. The wren hit the ground and tumbled into the wire barrier around the chicken coop. The Baron's getting at least a hundred interns. They came by rail, but the Baron had to send trucks to bring them from the station to the north pasture. I suppose that explains all the construction, the hen muttered. The humans have been running their machines day and night, building fences and towers and inexplicable metal things. What are interns? The wren said, I don't know, but they're humans. I think they're like visitors. They're going to stay here in the Baron's care. Great, said the hen. She could hear the rumble of engines approaching. More mouths to feed. The farmer emerged from his house, carrying an empty basket, and stomped over to the coop. Morning, Rosie, he said. The hen ignored him. We're getting interns, the wren shouted. None of my business said the farmer, opening the chute at the bottom of the coop. A little light today, Rosie? Winter's coming, said the hen. You let me know if anyone starts shutting down for the season, the farmer said. We just fenced off some new ground in the north pasture. Girls might enjoy the outdoors if they're not producing. The hen knew 13 and 22 hadn't laid in almost a week but no hens ever came back after being relocated. I'll let you know, said the hen. The farmer turned and walked back into the house. 
You're not laying any more, the wren said to the hen. Shut up, said the hen. You could relocate with the other hens. I said shut up. The hen snapped her beak. The wren hopped backward and cowered. A caravan of trucks rolled up to the edge of the fence at the north pasture. The hen could see most of the enclosure behind the edge of the barn. The baron's guards prodded a line of thin, bald men into the enclosure. The bald men all wore gray, and there were human symbols painted on their clothes and foreheads. One of the bald men staggered and fell. The nearest guard ran up and began kicking him. The other bald men did nothing. They didn't even try. The hen watched and wondered when the baron had decided to treat these men more like animals than humans. She also wondered how long it would be before the baron decided that even animals should be treated like property. How far can you fly? The hen asked the wren. The wren puffed out his chest with pride. I've flown all the way to the ocean. The hen braced herself and said, Tell me about it. Thank you. Thank you. That was fantastic. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to get you. Just have a yeah, I will also. So that was um, the 512 from, I think, two weeks ago. And that was, was this the first one that wasn't recorded? The second one. The second one? Yeah. So there's an <laughs> illustration for this, which is, I started out thinking I was going to, you know, do drawings and like all this fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. And I did a pencil sketch for this first week and just kind of scanned it in and mm -hmm. said, oh, I'll do better next time. And then the second week I did some more sketches and I said, okay, well, I'm running out of time. I'm going to scan these in and then do some editing in, in uh, this image editing program called GIMP. Mm -hmm. I did that and I colored it and like, oh, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last two weeks I've just taken photos off uh, Wikipedia, mm -hmm. um, which are licensed for you know, yes. sharing and said, oh, what can we do with this? You know, mm -hmm. Because um, at the moment the editing on the computer is a a lot faster for me than, you know, doing um, the drawing and, and all that. So, but I'm getting back into it. So I, I still hope to do that. What made you decide to change um, the, the bonus feature, if you would? Right. A couple of things. One of them was um, the whole point of the 512s is to try different things. And mm -hmm. I felt like I'd done a year of the podcast. Um, I kind of knew what that was and um i did a survey a couple months ago to say hey if you're reading this you know flash fiction thing let me know what you think should i do a second year because i started out saying okay i'll definitely do one year of this and then see mm -hmm. how it goes and um it turned out i really liked doing the writing um but you know two people were listening to the podcast <laughs> so i'm like i i could try something else you know it'll be okay have you always enjoyed illustrating Excuse me. Um, You've been in my house for an hour and I've already infected you. <laughs> no, totally not you. Uh, yes, I have. Um, and I've also liked um, comic books for a long time and mm -hmm. graphic novels. So I've always been interested in it. We've had almost entire shows devoted to graphic novels. Oh, I can so. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite graphic novels? Oh, that's, that's a tough question. Okay, um, give me like your I, top top three. Okay, I, and I'm, not like it doesn't have to be like you know issue one, issue two, like yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, well, just off the top of my head, um, I'm very excited that Planetary finally got issue twenty seven out. Okay. <laughs> um, and feel free to ask me if I'm totally going too too far into the cornfields or anything. <coughs> um, I there was a um, a series that has ended now, but you can buy the whole run of it in trade paperbacks mm -hmm. uh, called Why the Last Man. Why the Last Man? Yeah, the letter Y mm -hmm. um, for the Y chromosome. Mm -hmm. um, and the premise is that 
some a, a mysterious event one day wipes out all the men on the planet except for one guy who's kind of a loser <laughs> um, <laughs> and so the world is uh, entirely women now except mm -hmm. for him and the whole the series is about you know he's trying to get to his girlfriend who was in um, another part of the world when this happened so he has no idea of what happened to her because obviously if you um, all the men suddenly die um, you know most you know, airline pilots are men a lot of you know people in positions of authority so there's total chaos for a while mm -hmm. um, and that was a really interesting th series because of how they handled the premise mm -hmm. um, there's also a lot of humor in it and just really interesting stuff so the, when I was younger, you know, I was really into the superhero comics, mm -hmm. and I still kind of am. But yeah. at some point, I um, kind of got burned out on the, the mainstream comics. I think you can only yeah. take so many um, people flying around in tights and capes yeah. before you have to look for some other... Yeah, and the other thing is you start to see, you know, kind of like if you watch a soap opera too long, they repeat the storylines mm -hmm. and, you know... Yeah. You know but, you know, there's some really cool stuff um, that different people are doing, especially with, you know, independent presses and small presses. And it's not all, like, you know, depressing black and white comics mm -hmm. that some people complain about. But No, they make um, also some amazing graphic novels for children mm -hmm. now. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, which, not, like, for children superheroes, but, like, yeah. actually, like, age-appropriate. Mm -hmm. They make some that are uh, much heavier handed storylines mm -hmm. my favorite series is long since gone but it was preacher oh yeah um, yeah and That's... i think dr normal like sandman oh sandman was great yeah yeah, yeah but like there's a lot <coughs> of um me. i mean there's a lot of different stuff out there and it's really really cool to see that and mm -hmm. i don't know uh, if dr normal's read fables no. but it's um no i'm i'm not much of a graphic novel guy yeah. most of the graphic novel reading in our house right now yeah. is done with our daughter and she's really <laughs> okay. enjoying amulet um mm -hmm. which tyler uh Sticka brought for her okay. and one called baby mouse which is this like insane drama queen little mouse girl <laughs> okay. i was just turned on to it by the um by the fine folks at uh what is it called? Planet 10. Planet 10. Yeah. Planet X, depending on who you ask, but Planet 10. Planet X, mm -hmm. Planet 10. And that was kind of cool. But we're not here to talk about graphic novels, are we? We're here okay. to talk about the oh, brown coats. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Aren't we? That was a nice segue. The brown segue. coats and nice Joss segue. Whedon. He's tired. He's yeah. tired of comic books. I was so going to ask whose favorite little... superhero was. It's All an right. You can question. ask that. And then I'm going to let you tell everyone who your favorite non super superhero is it's me no, i'm my not. favorite superhero curtis, i do this each week curtis, who's your i'm favorite a superhero, superhero. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna have to be boring and say superman okay although i also Why? have a soft spot for green lantern mm. oh dr normal no green lantern not I know, I oh, didn't okay. say. It, I everybody thought... says Green Lantern. But, <coughs> folks, it's his... all about the Green Hornet. Yeah, his favorite Trust green me, Hornet. the Green Hornet. We'll he loves the Green Hornet. I know. Hornet. Although, Seth aren't they Logan, making yeah. the Green no, Hornet? No, I know. Movie? What's up I'm with not, that? That's not, messed no, up. I don't know about that. I am just... That's going to suck. Again, Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds. I don't know about that right. either. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't um, know this. I, you know, making poor decisions. I have a problem. Anytime they make a superhero movie, I'm always mm -hmm. like, what are you thinking? Really? <laughs> yeah, you, they said the same, the same thing about Keaton. In, um, I liked Keaton in the first in the Batman. Batman. I and didn't like the second. I didn't like anything about the second. But you know what? I, really I don't like, know this Seth Logan thing. It makes no like? sense. He doesn't look I like, like Christian a Bale's Reed. Batman. Oh, yeah. And I didn't think I'd buy that. Mm -hmm. I really didn't think I'd really? buy that. No, but then I saw. You the, never work the, on this set again. But then I saw. I, in, you. I'm sorry. He's like Terminator Four or something now, right? I don't know. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't watched. At least that's his nickname in Hollywood. I seen anything past hey. Terminator Two. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I just, you know, at a certain point, I kind of. So, <laughs> so back to ahead. this Joss Whedon issue. Yeah. Oh, but he know. is doing comics now. So who? Joss, Joss Whedon. Whedon. Oh. God, distill yes. my heart. <laughs> Pretty soon it's going to be operas and symphonies because he's so good. You hey, know? He's already done some musicals. I, you know what? I didn't think Dr. Horrible was that good. 
I really didn't. I watched it. It was like, okay, this is lame. At the end. There are parts that you laugh. The chick he's interested loud. in dies. But then he transforms you know into the evil, the and that's good. Wow, that really made my head hurt, right? I, I think he's really obvious. I, I think that's my problem with Joss Whedon. Is he's a really obvious sort of storyteller. He doesn't leave anything. I don't know. He doesn't make me go, hmm, you know? I don't think he wanted to ask you about the brown coats and Joss Whedon so much as he Maybe wanted to not. go on a tirade. Yeah. I do. You may have made some en- um, enemies tonight. I know. So I know I do. You may want to distance yourself from this whole thing. Yeah. Well, one of them is going to be my brother-in-law. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? That's fine. Maddie knows I mean, no, how I you like feel Matt. about these things. I, yeah. He does. I just don't he think... He accepts you anyway. Well, you know, so tell me, say, you know, yes. first, okay, the whole brown coat thing. Let's yes. go with that. Um, so I grew up wait, on... Wait, wait, wait. I just want to no. say something. Before Dr. Arnold goes any further, my brother is a brown coat. My brother's partner is a brown coat. Some of our best friends Some of our are best brown coats. friends are brown coats. So please, We don't please discriminate here. Don't send us hate mail. I have no issue with the brown coats. I am a brown coat supporter. We invited a Yay. brown coat to dinner the other night. <laughs> it's okay. Just, Just don't, as long as they don't leave hate me for 10. the bullshit that's about to come out of my husband's mouth, okay? So that movie, to guess who's coming own. to dinner? A brown coat? I don't know. Right. Dr. Normal. Dr. Sydney Normal, Portier you may now say your ass and I'm bullshit. Know. It's okay. Um, Go ahead. I'll, I'll be the Spencer Tracy of that. Uh, so, so here's the thing, right? I grew up on Star Trek. Mm-hmm. The original Star Trek, like oh, yeah. Spock and Kirk and all that stuff, right? Classic Trek. Right, you know? And Good I, the uniforms kids, on Classic Trek. Yeah, the kids had the little uniforms and crap, you know, and <laughs> stuff. But, but you know, and I then like later the they did the, the next generation and people became Klingons and learned how to speak. Do you speak Klingon? I Klingon? do not. Oh, good. I never okay. took the time. So we're good. I have a yeah, Klingon translator for my iPhone, though. And so, oh, nice. anyway, yeah. anyway. God, I'm <laughs> anyway, sorry, Doctor. Well, go ahead. So the Klingon thing, yeah, not so much. So, and then there's like the brown coats thing, mm-hmm. and it's like I never really got into that thing. And to me, it would be like it would be my like if I started an organization calling called the Star Trek Red Shirts. You know what I mean? I bet you there it's is like, a Red Shirts organization. Yeah, but what a bunch of nerds! <laughs> Are you saying that you've never been nerdy? I'm nerdy by. I'm okay, not. let me I mean, let me ask nerdy. you a question. You know what I mean? Let me ask you a question. Do you think everyone? Do you think everyone who it's like the people who themselves? are Jedi's? It's like the people who are Jedi's <laughs> who are like I'm a Jedi man. It's like oh great, All right. the Force. Be with you. I love Star Wars. No, it's okay. I, love I, have the original. Question, I love R2. I have a question I love for the brown that. coats. I have a but, question for the brown you know, coats. I'm not going to be a Jedi master. I wonder how the brown <laughs> coats that. feel about a guy that puts on ripped up spandex, wears lip gloss, and uh, hair sprays his hair and feathers it. My answer to that is I got laid. They didn't. Okay. <laughs> how do you know the brown? There's girls mm-hmm. in the brown coats. There are. There no are one's teams. getting laid. But, uh, the, <laughs> I think you're wrong. <laughs> Look, the guys who are speaking Klingon. Not so much. You also think that no one gets laid um, in the SCA, but that is completely untrue. <laughs> there oh, is a lot of sex going we, on. We can't even go there. <laughs> That's a whole different after hours. How many enemies do you want to make tonight? He's <laughs> he's naive. It's like he's a naive. You know what I'm saying? Because 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 when I was younger, I mean. I read the whole J.R.R. Tolkien mm-hmm. thing, Lord right? Rings. And then it was like, oh, I could be an elf. I could be a hobbit. Yeah, you know, come on, just enjoy it. So, and, you know, so, so the question is after. Yeah, I was right. He didn't want to ask you anything. He just wants to. Why die. are you a brown coat? And, um, and more, why, you know, what, why do you like Joss Whedon? What, you know, if you can break it down in, in a couple of those <laughs> answers in so 30 seconds or less. 30 seconds. That long? <laughs> um, okay, so first he so, wants to know why you're a brown coat. Yes. Right. Well, I'm going to answer the second part first. Okay, that's which good. Which is, that's I've good. never met Joss Whedon, so I can't say if I like him or not. Thank but you. But I do okay. like his work. Yes. Sure. Even Some though, of it, I have even issues though, with dolls. Even though he kills off all the very best characters that even, you can yeah, become you know, emotionally I, attached with. My only is, issue with that is that he killed Doyle, but that was kind of a necessity because yeah. we all See, know I why actually, he killed Doyle. Yeah. 
People do complain about that a lot. Yeah. But I okay. only care because he <laughs> killed Doyle, but I understand why he killed Had a Doyle. Doyle thing. I like Doyle. Doyle thing who's Doyle? Doyle? Shut up, Dr. Normal. <laughs> no, who's Doyle? You're not a part of this conversation anymore. Who's Doyle? <laughs> he was my favorite character on Angel. Oh, see, yeah, I watched... He was a good character. Yeah. I watched the Buffy, and I watched the Angel because... <laughs> Gammy Chaos was watching yeah. Buffy. And it was cute. I mean, Buffy well, was cute. Well, here's the thing. He was dating me at the time, and then it was early uh, in our marriage, and then I was it's, pregnant. It's like when a guy watches And you want to make the, you make the girlfriend, operas, early you know? wife, pregnant lady happy. Mm-hmm. So you curl up with them on the couch and no, I mean, watch the shows uh, with them. Buffy was cute. It was a cute concept, you know. Who was um, your favorite Buffy character? Angel was all right. <laughs> I kind of got into it. Who was you know, your favorite Buffy character? And then they character? opened up the earth and all that shit. And Who, was like, oh, okay, Who was your favorite Buffy character? Who was your favorite Buffy character? Uh, Buffy? I don't know. <laughs> That's I the really dumbest freaking answer don't know. I've ever heard. I don't remember. Really? Mm. It was like eating a can candy bar. You don't remember the uh, <laughs> aftertaste. You just ate a freaking candy bar. You're it's not like drinking a fine Bordeaux, right? It's like, well, an asshole. It was the, you know, <sighs> really? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm an adult. Who's your favorite character on UFO? <laughs> Ooh, that's a tough one. See, we talk- see, look, here's the thing. That, that's the- like eating a candy bar. <laughs> No, it's no, not no. like having a fine Wait, martini. Are we talking about UFO with the, David, what's his name? No, 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 no. No, we're talking about old no. Jerry Anderson UFO. This is 60 That's stuff. I'm talking yeah. about. It's, yeah, no, okay, see? Just checking. No, 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 no. My favorite so, character is the chick that gives me the biggest boner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. That's I'm, fair, I'm, Dr. I'm, I, I, no, I, That's no, scary. I don't know. They were all good. Yeah. That okay, was, so we were letting... All the literary people just left the chat room. They're like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. It's after hours, folks. Deal with it. I should have um, warned you that my husband's a pig. It's okay, though. Um, we were letting Curtis answer a question until I asked I you about Buffy. And, and it's, it's true. All I mean, I loved the there. whole 60s stuff. And the kids like the Joss Whedon stuff. And, and I... I liked some of the Angel we watched. That was pretty good. I didn't think Dr. Horrible was that great. Who was your favorite character on Angel? Angel? <laughs> <laughs> he was good. Yeah. Liked him. <laughs> I, 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 I did you like the bar like? owner. Yeah, I was going to say, you liked the guy, um, you know, Lauren. 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 Yeah, who, who's dead. Saying, yeah. like, for real? Sad. Yeah, for real, he's dead. I saw him Ooh. at an interesting story. Jeez. I saw oh. um, Andy Hallett at a convention once. Mm-hmm. Please jump in here the anytime. The guy who played Lauren on <laughs> yeah. Angel. And uh, he was talking about how he would always be in makeup because he was playing the demon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the... And they would have extras on the set because it was a karaoke bar. So you'd have all these men and women. And... Um, you know, he was single and young and male, so he would like flirt with the uh, you know extras and other actresses on the show. And um, one of them, you know, came on to him very strongly and said, you know, hey, let's you know go back to your trailer and get it on. Mm-hmm. And he was and and he said, and he's thinking, okay, this is great. This is what I came here for. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, you know, let me go and get this makeup off. <laughs> No. And, yeah, and she. He said she was not interested. <laughs> yeah. She wanted to do it with, with the, the demon. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. <sighs> People. Well, funny story. Well, that's ex- that's exactly business. right. I mean, you do it in the Batman suit. No, I mean, you don't I'm sure get Adam to do West, it in the Batman right? suit. <laughs> well, we had this conversation before. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that. I have that's no exactly. interest in. <laughs> I mean, this is not a surprising story. No. <laughs> So you were I telling us be. why I you like Joss Whedon's work. You were telling us why you like Joss Whedon's work. Well, is it Joss Whedon and then the brand cut thing? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yes. So people do complain that he kills off characters. Yeah. But you have but to do that complain. sometimes. I like well, that. See, the thing is, I do like that about him because they get to love the characters. And then they lose them. Correct. So is that a so cheap? He's doing is that a cheap? Right. Uh, I don't think that's cheap because you no, have to. Doing... But is he being cheap by doing that as a storyteller? I don't think so. I mean, if you read some of the interviews with him, or if yeah. you just, I mean, uh, uh, as a writer, I I like to look at the stories and say. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's you know it's TV, so they have to put out a new episode every week, so you know things get out of whack and. Yeah. Like Sometimes you have to totally write a sense. new story yeah, every but week there are in a things podcast. That they yeah. they do plan out and say we're going to do this. The large arcs. and in order, like on Angel, I I believe they always plan to kill off Doyle 
in the first season. Yeah. Um, so they, the actor's personal life may have expedited that a little bit. Well, but. yeah, but but they always plan that. So they're like, <laughs> okay, we're going to make you love this character, and mm -hmm. then we are going to kill him off, and there's going to be a reason. In the most and heroic be consequences, and depressing way and, possible. But it was a great episode. It was fantastic. And it made it's my you, favorite episode. And it made you feel, you know, mm -hmm. that I hate impact, feeling things. Right? Damn it. <laughs> yeah. But see, that's what, you know, <laughs> a lot of storytellers are want, want to... You know, get you to feel something. You know, Correct. As, a, as you... a storyteller, if I'm telling a story, mm -hmm. if I can make you cry. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. My job. Absolutely. So at that, you know, he's very good at that. Yeah. Making people cry. Yeah. But why <laughs> can do you he make like people laugh? Writing? I like, yes, he also makes people laugh. Yes, so I yes. like a lot of the, um, the humor and the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people have said that he, you know, be, people have said that, you know, Buffy was a more natural show for him than Angel. Because mm -hmm. the characters were because of the characters' ages and mm -hmm. his natural style was very kind of sarcastic, and snarky and sort of teenagerish. Yeah. He was uh, like the uh, John Hughes of uh, gothic horror, kind of. Yeah, you could say that. Quote me on and that. That was folks. a nice thing that you just said about Joss <laughs> yeah. Whedon, honey. That's Except right. You might John want to Hughes watch yourself. Dead, so I don't know what you're he trying is to imply dead. there. But John Hughes was he was a great. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, he so. was, yeah he did some great stuff. Okay. But, yeah, so, and the brown coats are just people who really loved, um, I think most of the brown coats actually really love a lot of the stuff that Joss Whedon does, not just Firefly and but it's, Serenity. But it is specific but it's, to Firefly and Serenity. Yeah, I think that's kind of when um, he had built this fan base with Buffy and Angel, and mm -hmm. that's kind of when people had something that they could really get organized around, as in he had created this... Um, you know, organization in Firefly called the Browncoats, who yeah. were sort of the the rebels. Um, it was he, very he, much a Star Wars formula. Yeah, uh, yeah. He actually based it on um, the Civil War, mm -hmm. and he said he said he wanted to write a story about the guys who lost the Civil War. Yeah, um, lost so, the whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Which yeah, time out? A lot of baggage there. Time right? out. The guys but who lost the that, Civil War. Before we do that, that would be the South. So, I've been keeping the this dudes with the slaves. Now I'm not so sure if we do revisionist history. What kind of happened? The Union <laughs> won the Civil War, yeah, right? He, he gets yeah. People complain about that too, but he wasn't. They, he they wasn't complain? doing the slavery thing. Although he does pull in some of the sort of um, um, tropes from you know the deep the South and the plantations and all that he sort of visually. He's, but he's never he, seen um, the television show. I don't believe he's watched the movie either. <laughs> Is this true, Dr. Normal? No. Uh, yeah, we watched it once. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It has the so guy from uh, Barney opinion, Miller in it. I it like that. An, the guy it from did Barney have, House. yes, it did yeah. have Ron Glass mm -hmm. in it. You yeah, did I like, like Ron that Gow part. Glass. You got really excited Detective, for a few minutes. Um, like, oh, oh my gosh, the I love the Barney the Miller. And then you were like, okay, I'm over it. Is Ron so, Glass going to come back? So explain. Is he going to arrest anybody? <laughs> yeah. I'd like it if he busted that guy. <laughs> so. yeah. I really could mystery science theater the whole damn. You can thing. mystery science theater anything. I could mystery That's science theater this show. So, um, uh, okay. So, anyway, so the brown coats. So um, the brown coats are the South, um, without slaves and the cotton gins. Let's get back to the fans for a moment. <laughs> yeah. okay. So the so what happened with Firefly was it was on Fox for less than a season. Fox canceled it, and people really got to love it in that time. And there was a big push to get some other network to pick up the series or to make a movie out of it. And when people heard there was going to be a movie, they got really excited. And it's kind of turned into this thing where people have met each other because of the brown coats and gotten together it's because a, they're all fans. It's become a community. Yeah, but it's be, they do, um, you know, you do more charity. things than that now. Yeah, okay. there's, yeah. Well, there's the, screenings there's every year. There's always the screenings. They can't stop the serenity every mm -hmm. summer when My they raise money and, for and Equality Mac Now. Always worked on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, which is a what great thing. What do they raise and, money for? Hmm? What? What do they raise money for? Equality Now. Equality, equality Now. now. Okay, I should know that. Yes, you should. Yeah, they're a great organization. Since our... My brother-in-law is involved with that, so. you know, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm all for yeah. that. So I that's think it's awesome. just 
I mean, and when we moved to Portland, I, you know, looked up the brown coats because I knew they were here and mm -hmm. we've met a lot of people that way. And it's been a way for us to get out and do stuff. So and, is, is there something like, do you dress up? Is there something, <laughs> I mean, the, I'm, I mean, do you so I have wear the say, red uh, shirt? I, or, I don't know. About, I'm curious. About, I, I don't know. So I have something to say about the subject of nerds. Okay. Yeah. And I believe... Uh, Everyone is nerdy about something. Sure. Unless and you're me, and then you're nerdy about a lot of stuff. Yeah, and that's okay, too. But, I mean, <laughs> people make fun of, you know, people like Star Trek and I Star Wars and dress up like things and whatever. But He has a Darth problem, Vader helmet. What? He has a Darth Vader helmet. I don't want to hear about your sex life. That's not. No, he's not allowed to wear the Darth Vader helmet or the Batman costume when we have well sex. Well played, That's Curtis. a rule. I'm sorry. Well played. <laughs> Um, he's also not allowed to but, dress up like he's You've watched the show hair. a few times, <laughs> I gather. You know what you're ready of um, when that Dr. Okay, Norman so starts get on. What was, yeah. finish so the, the thought. thing is, nice. people can be nerdy about other things, right? You mm -hmm. know, people who love football go out in public mm -hmm. wearing I'm, the jerseys I'm a lot and more likely no one to make makes fun, fun of them. Of I don't why like is that. that? Like, why do you get mm -hmm. made fun of if you're dressed oh, up as a I Jedi? Make, but I make not, fun of the people who wear the jerseys. You know, well, good for you. And they don't beat me up because I'm a girl. So or, that's an advantage. <laughs> yeah. But I think Sorry. as far as that goes, I mean, people do all sorts of crazy things. I mean, we were talking about the puzzle hunts before mm -hmm. and we tell people about it. And the first question they always ask is, what do you win? <laughs> and there's no prize Company. or trophy. It's kind of, a, yeah, it's really about the fun. It's and a the nerdy thing. It's it. like you and, won because, you know, you yeah. have the satisfaction. Yeah, and, you know, we think we're, a little bit crazy because we go out and do this thing and mm -hmm. the thing we get out of it is not really a, a tangible thing but you know people do all sorts of things they have clubs for whatever like mm -hmm. bowling leagues and you know yeah. people go hiking and whatever so it's just not so mean everybody of people yeah so it's... everybody has different interests mm -hmm. and if you can find people who share them every, and every you, human being is a joiner at some point i'm not the joint. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. He no, says, says a brown coat. And, no. But, yeah. yeah. People, but, and, and people think, generally feel the need to belong to something. Mm -hmm. And it's good. And uh, Except me. <laughs> Let's um, review the yeah. old Game of Chaos photo album. <laughs> I think I'm going to look at the picture of Dr. Noel dressed up like the big bad wolf. Was it Halloween? No, it was not. Or Again. maybe... <laughs> Maybe we could uh, look for the picture of Dr. Arnold dressed up as a clown. Again, it's after hours. Anything to get you laid, folks. <laughs> you were not I might look laid into this in the brown clown coat costume. thing. You were not getting laid in the clown costume. We were out drinking wine at wineries with a bunch of other people dressed we up as clowns. We were the cacophony society. You didn't get laid? You were too drunk. You went to All sleep right. when you oh, got geez. home. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm just saying. Suddenly things get a little bit <laughs> personal on After Hours. I'm just saying, you can't make fun of people who dress up in costumes when you've been known to dress up in silly it, costumes and Save this for the friends. next Stephen Walling episode where he's in the middle and freaking hey, out. I was it's dressed like, up in costumes Mom, too. Dad, shut up. I think up, we gave poor little please. Stephen a, a, a panic attack. Thought we were going to have a tiff yeah. on the air. If you haven't seen it, see the Stephen Walling After it Hours. Good. I highly it recommend good. it. It was good. It was good. It's Some good. of the same banter. Okay, it was I think on Curtis TV is a little more grounded. He doesn't have to feel <laughs> like the kid in the middle. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, what I was going to say. So was I that, thought that was a very good point. Yeah. Is that everyone kind of, you know, what's the differences between being a Jedi and mm -hmm. being a trekkie, yeah, I mean, trekker, people, right? Trekkie. And a I you know, a Vikings much, fan or yeah, something. Pretty much everyone yeah. can find something that they love. And I think that's great, you know, no matter what it is. We still and have our timber scarves. I love timber scarves. Scarf. That we still owe <laughs> Sean Levy 30 bucks for. Hey, my timber scarf I earned by guessing. I know. The number of timber <laughs> scarves that was sold correctly. You owe, you owe Sean Levy $30. Yeah. Uh, I own some, a few bucks. <laughs> And he works at the Oregonian too, so I might. He's gonna get to... his movie critic buddies to come in <laughs> and uh, take out your me new kneecaps. <laughs> yep. If you don't pay him back the thirty dollars that you own for those scarves, I'm pretty sure he doesn't need the money. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you are you into track at all? Or oh yeah. yeah. Really? You go to track in the park? Fan. Yes, that yeah. was great. That was yeah. the one thing this summer that I really wanted to go do that I never made it to. 
Mm. It was very sad. It's well, going to, they're going to do it again next yeah, summer. Yeah, they're going to do it again. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. I mean, even if you, uh, the funny thing is that I, I, I think the production values were almost as high as the original series. <laughs> Which <laughs> and, is just saying a whole lot. But it was And fun. it got better. It's, they redid those effects. Yeah, they re, I, you know. I'm kind of of two minds on that. It's oh, the same thing as like, like they redo yeah, the I Star Wars. It's like the Lucas Turner colorizing. answer for. Really? <laughs> yeah, there's actually there's a website where you can see comparisons. Like they yeah. show the original special effects and the yep. new special effects. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a lot of it is you know, I just don't think it was really necessary, especially when the rest of the show still looks like it was in the '60s with the uniforms and the, the hairstyles and I the think skirts. It was a waste and, of money. You know well, what I, I mean, think it is, Curtis? I think it just for me. If it happened after about. 1971. I just don't care. Um, I mean, <laughs> hey, Dr. If it, was, it was the 60s. Can I ask you a question? And cheesy effects. Does that include I'm people that were that. born after 1971? I knew that was coming. What? <laughs> you said if it happened after 1971, you don't care. There I make an exception for 1977. <laughs> and that's the year Elvis died, ladies and gentlemen, the king of rock and roll. <laughs> On the toilet with a jelly donut. <laughs> you know what's sad is that oh, our child kiddo knows kiddo. that he died on the toilet. <laughs> we didn't tell her. Speaking of joiners, I'll be uh, wearing my school. white jumpsuit with the fringe. Um, it's a kind of a cross between Evil Knievel and Elvis. Um, check it out. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Right, Chris I think, is like, get me um, out of here. No, but it uh, occurs to me. I have to say something. It occurs to me that this was the week that we were gonna have a yeah, thirty minute. it's not happening. We're not good at doing <laughs> the whole not. thirty minute after hours. After hours, it's a long great. thirty minutes. We just get yeah. too involved. And, and Curtis is a great, great is. guest. <laughs> <laughs> and and mostly that's because when you insulted. That's you know, okay. A, a we have to do a little controversy he here. To, we he have did to not break jump off the desk and smack you. <laughs> I know. That was nice of him. Well, he seems like a reasonable person. That he's it, not going to punch me out. We'll see after we're after hours. <laughs> when the camera, after after hours, when the cameras are off. I think my brother might come him. over later tonight on his way home, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just give him some wine. Mm, yeah. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good point. I like I like what you said that everyone sort of joins <laughs> things. No, I do. I really do. Everyone should love something or someone. And I think everyone does. Well, yeah. and Except how they express really that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess there are limits to that if you yeah. like. But those are the people that are really unhappy, and no one really wants to be around. Right. Yeah. So maybe if we could just accept them. <laughs> Give them a little anyway. cuddle. So, yeah. where do you see your uh, writing going, and what you're doing with your your projects? Um, not really sure right now. I mean, you're I still would, thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm working on a few novels, and I would like mm -hmm. to get those Publish. published at some point. Do but, you have an for what you're doing for Nanorimo? Do you have something in mind already? Do you have an outline for Nanorimo? Do you know where you're going? Is that something that's going to try to be? Nope. A, nope. <laughs> yeah, Not either. at all. I have nothing. I have an idea, and it's um, a st one of the five twelves actually from last year, mm -hmm. which I wrote, and a lot of people really liked it, um, but they said I wanted a lot more, mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, there is no more. This is it." <laughs> It's but 512 say, words. Yeah, but they kept they kept saying, you know, well, you should really try to <laughs> do something with that. And and there is, you know, a lot more that could be in that that sort of world, mm -hmm. which I didn't really delve into. It's just this because 500 words. It's really short. Yeah. And so it's a lot of them are really just scenes. Mm -hmm. and, and and then I so I kept thinking about them. Like, yeah, I could do something more with that, but I don't really know what. So. so I read some of them, and, and I wondered if you would ever consider, like, pulling them together, like, maybe a shortcut-style situation, where Ooh, something shortcuts. could... Mm. Yeah, I like I like... That. I like I, I've never watched the movie the entire way through. <laughs> I've read the I've read the collection yeah. of short mm -hmm. stories, which okay. prompted me to then think, because most of them, if they're even connected, are very loosely, like, there's... Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. do you ever, I mean, do you ever have... Do you ever think that way? Do you ever think I can... No, I'm just talking to myself here. Um, 
there have been a couple that I think could be sort of connected, mm-hmm. but uh, like I said, this is kind of very experimental, mm-hmm. and um, there are a few that I've tried to expand into longer short stories, mm-hmm. and I'm still working on those. Um, but I think I think what I'm learning is that you know, I've looked at other people who are doing stuff online uh, with like, putting their writing online and giving it away and stuff like that and yeah. sort of getting a fan base before they try to get published or at, at the same time. That, yeah. Um, and it seems like uh, the thing I'm doing is not necessarily the most popular. Like this is basically an anthology series, yeah. right? It's a different story every week with different characters and a different setting. It's not giving someone something to... Yeah, and I think people um, prefer... You know the longer stories where they can, you know, even if it's serialized, they can, you know, get. They want more, something to connect to. Yeah, and you know, definitely you can get, you know, more depth to your characters and develop things a lot more. And like, I have a friend Carl who feels like, you know, when he gets a book, he wants something that's kind of substantial because if he's going to invest the time to read a book, he wants enough of a story there that he can really you know, very sort of sink his teeth into it. And so, if it's a serial, I like to have the second one ready mm-hmm, because I yeah. usually get, if it's good enough, yeah. I get invested by the end of it. Yeah. My wife refuses to read series unless they're finished. Oh, I she got to, burned on the wheel of time, so she refuses to read any series now unless she knows it's finished. I so, I can respect that. Yeah, I really can. I have a, a, a Morgan who's not read the Harry Potter books mm-hmm. because she doesn't want to read the books first, so she can't enjoy the movie because she uh, knows she'll like yeah, the books better. Yeah, yeah, that's usually. I think true. that was the. If I'm wrong about the explanation of that, Morgan, <laughs> <clears throat> I'll let you correct me loudly. But I, that was mm-hmm. my understanding of it with a spoon or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Dr. Normal, was did we want to talk about that thing? There was stuff that happened this week. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm uh, trying to reset the stream. Oh, so we're not even streaming right now? <laughs> uh, no, we are not. There was much dismay today when what was not, I guess, completely unexpected, Court and Fat Boy were shut down. They are no longer mm. at the radio station, and they are not the only ones. Several other people, radio talent, were let go. That's very irritating. I'm not a big radio listener at all. I consumed the Court and Fat Boy show as mm-hmm. as a uh, podcast after the fact, and we were very sad. We we're very upset. We we're very unhappy. <laughs> Shame on you! Did not make us thrilled. So, best of luck to Court and Fat Boy and to everyone else who lost their job at the debacle, the radio station. I do mm-hmm. not know what radio is thinking, and it's making me a little nutty. And Curtis, you uh, did some broadcast and radio as well. I right. did. <laughs> um, Dr. Normal? No, I mean, we, we talked about this uh, previously. We about... talked about how he had a great voice yeah. for it. No, no. He he did voice lessons. Right. Yeah, right. I did. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not I broadcast. That's what I'm talking about. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> but it's I did, like this. When you... <laughs> I did read. Um... I'm not crazy. I am crazy, but I'm not that crazy. I did read some stuff on a local radio station down in the Bay Area. There, there was go. in that connection qualifies. with NaNoWriMo. That qualifies. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And that was fun. And I got to go in the studio and do that. But yeah, I took um, voice acting lessons for mm-hmm. about a year, um, a few years ago, mm-hmm. when it was also like another one of those things I was interested in. I had been interested in for some time. I just figured, you know, what the hell, I'll try it out. And took a few different classes. And did you it enjoy really, it? Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, yeah. the um, the instructors were really good. And they off, it was at the Voice Factory in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, and they offered, you know, different kinds of classes. So a lot of them were on um, doing um, commercial um, voice acting. So a lot of, you know... Radio ads, like 30-second spots, um, things like that. But they also had things on, like, audiobooks and character voices and animation 
and they're all you know it was interesting to to see what all the the things you did the same in all of them and then the mm -hmm. slightly different skills you needed for each of them mm -hmm. so so that was fun i really enjoyed the uh the character voices one yeah yeah that it sounds like you're brought some of that to uh yeah the 512 stories mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse yeah. me i'm sorry um and that it just wasn't something that you felt like pursuing after that though not at the time yeah. i mean i felt like you know i kind of have a feel for this um but i was still i was working a regular job at the time mm. it was like if i wanted to you know those darn regular jobs yeah i mean I, I probably could have you know gotten you know a demo together and then started doing you know sending it around and trying to audition for things mm -hmm. but at the time it was like you know i think i've learned a lot mm -hmm. and it definitely helped me when i was doing the podcast mm -hmm. to know a lot of that stuff um and it was it's also just kind of fun like you know to go take a class in something you're interested in yeah and and now you know like things they told us in class were like oh you, when you watch tv you can't skip the commercials you have to listen to what they're doing when you listen to radio listen to the commercials and and, and for a while i was and it was interesting to hear you know what different people were doing and mm -hmm. I could tell, like, oh, this guy's a really good actor, and this guy's not so much. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the um, one of the instructors always complained about was people um, who would, for example, small business owners who did like local TV ads or whatever, would put themselves in the ad, mm -hmm. and they would be horrible. <laughs> Which is a big mistake. Yeah. Um, instead of you know finding a, an actor, someone who actually had training and had you know skill and knew what they were doing to mm -hmm. you know, do the ad for them which would be so much better i was thinking of those car commercials for like the little local oh yeah uh, and lots in the in the like the electronic stores mm -hmm. we're slashing prices <laughs> ah! yeah and there's kind of a charm to it right but at the same time i just don't like commercials very much <laughs> well, uh, there's there's that too but i mean i do have to say there if the commercials are done really well yeah. like they're like really short films almost yeah that and i enjoy but that's an art form that yeah. is not yeah. utilized mm -hmm. well not as much as it could be no. but like the apple ads i enjoy a lot i with. yeah i don't have i don't watch tv anymore no i watch i mean i watch hulu but i don't <laughs> i don't watch um yeah i don't watch yeah you know, we don't we don't either we, so I don't we download our stuff from yeah. amazon and itunes because yeah. we were on the on the road last year for about five months mm -hmm. so we didn't have a you know, cable at it's all it's a much and more convenient way to consume no, yeah, entertainment yeah and we only watch like six shows anyway so yeah. oh we wanted to we wanted we wanted to us the royal we <laughs> it's back to the joss whedon unfortunately you said the same thing that most joss whedon fans say except my problems with dollhouse yeah <laughs> what are you, are you watching it i'm still watching it. are you I mean, watching because you are hoping that maybe it'll start to not suck so much i'm hoping i mean mm -hmm. there there are things i do enjoy about the show so, so it has redeeming don't, don't qualities. Don't send me mail either, people. Um, <laughs> I have yet to uh, I have yet to hear anyone say it's perfect completely. I have yet to hear yeah, anyone. But you don't hear that about a lot of shows, honestly. I don't really. Like, know. Yeah, well, yeah. Mm. There, there, you I mean, can't help are... but see people talk about Dollhouse. <laughs> I can generally avoid listening to people talk about television shows. Mm -hmm. What is, what is it that you like about Dollhouse? What I like is that they're trying to do something different mm -hmm. and they're trying to explore. I mean, it's very much a science fiction show mm -hmm. and they've done with lip gloss, <laughs> which most good science fiction shows have had a lot of lip gloss on at least one character. I'm just saying. I haven't noticed, but I will take your word for it. You can't have a science fiction show without a girl in a short skirt or a tight outfit. It's just, mm. it, you look okay, back. Yeah, that's, okay. Star Trek. I'll buy that. Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, mm -hmm. Doctor Who. There's always a girl with lip gloss in the Doctor Who's. <laughs> that's right. true. Yes, I'll give you that. Okay. So. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a science fiction show. And I respect that they're trying to do some really interesting things mm -hmm. um, that are very much like they're definitely science fiction yeah like a lot of science fiction concepts and tropes have been sort of 
brought into the mainstream. Like mm-hmm. you see a lot of action movies that have are set in the future or have futuristic elements, but they're not really science fiction. As a, in that they're not about you know this idea or what if something something something. Um, and Dollhouse is very much that. And they did some. My, I guess my problems with Dollhouse can be summed up in, um, if you look at the first season. Of the three best episodes, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, Mm -hmm. two of them were never aired. Mm -hmm. And you can get them on the DVD, and that's great. But, you know, Fox said, we don't want these. Or So this is not so much a question that you can answer, but if Fox just keeps canceling the shows early (laughs) and nixing the best uh, pieces, why does it keep giving him shows? I don't know. They, uh, well, I mean, they did like renew Dollhouse for a second season. Yeah. And they were, they seemed, you know, when they were starting the first season up, they seemed very excited about it. And I But think, they nixed what you think are the two. I haven't seen the DVD, so I don't know. Yeah, I well, those. so two of the three are the pi- the original pilot, which, which never got never aired, aired. And they redid. And um, this, the other one is the 13th episode, which... Uh, apparently they made because it was part of the the distribution deal like they had to have it to syndicate overseas and mm-hmm. other stuff and put it on the DVD and certain contractual obligation type things um, and that episode was set you know several years in the future mm-hmm. um, after sort of the the dollhouse had gone bad not to spoil anyone but and you know, I, I, I and think I that thought, I think that if you've watched, if you've watched it, <laughs> and you can't see that it's going to be going bad, uh, or that it yeah, is already, well, but they're yeah. So it, it's so right now it's interesting because they're taking a lot of the stuff that was in that thirteenth episode, mm-hmm. and they're putting them into the second season shows. So like they've done things, dropping with, them into little, yeah, like little, like certain phrases that they use that were important in the future. They're using mm-hmm. now. So it's kind of like, and it, and that's kind of fun because mm-hmm. if you've seen that and I guess they aired it, uh, in the summer sometime mm-hmm. as sort of an extra thing. And it's on the DVD, like I said, and I think it's on Hulu too. Oh, or maybe I did watch it then. But and <laughs> you know, and that's and I think that was the most science fictiony of the whole show, mm-hmm. and it also showed you like this is really what you can do with this idea. And yeah. I felt like when I was watched the first season, and and I think a lot of people share this opinion. Like the first five episodes were sort of filler that Fox wanted because they wanted sort of an action-y type show with lots of sex and shooting and stuff. Correct. And episode six, which was the third really good episode <laughs> mm-hmm. of the first season, is when they kind of revealed a lot of stuff that was in the original pilot. And this when is When they probably, actually bring it back to the real story. What I think of the as the the story that is going to go long term and mm-hmm. sort of develop all these characters because that's one thing you can do in TV that you don't get with a, a two hour movies you get you know you get twenty years hours to develop a story yeah, yeah yeah and you can really get into each of the characters and really see them change over time and you know do lots of interesting things. And this is probably more than anyone needs to hear about Dollhouse at this point. That's okay, <laughs> but, because we've we've gone well over our 30 minutes and probably well over the traditional hour at this point. So I'm going to ask yeah. you to remind everyone where they can find you on the internet. Mm-hmm. So the website is snout, S-N-O-U-T dot org. And you can link, that has links to everything. It's got links to the 512s, um, other stories I've written that are online, uh, the game which is the puzzle hunts mm-hmm. and um, a couple other things. I can't remember what they are now. but And um, at Sparkle, S-P-A-R-C-K-L on, on Twitter. Twitter. Yep. And what is the date for Ignite? Ignite Portland 7 is November 19th. November I think that's 19th. a Thursday. It is a Thursday. It's always yeah. a Thursday. So Ignite okay. Portland. And uh, once again, no tickets. So no tickets. first come, yep. first serve. Please don't put a whole bunch of coats on an entire <laughs> row of seats. It just makes people angry. It's not a nice thing to do. Thank you so much for joining us, Curtis. Well, thank you for having me. Come back next week when we'll have our Halloween episode with horror author Jamia Jefferson. Good.